right, so to show what I do when I add interior floors and ceilings and whatnot, at least the way I like to do it, and there's many ways you can do it however you wish, I'm just going to show you what I do. So I have the building set up, and this entire area, basically up to this whole half, is going to have a floor on it. That's going to be for the open interior, and then from this partition to the front, again, we'll have a floor slash ceiling first second floor then probably a ceiling on the on the top of the second floor to allow allow me to maybe partition it and drop a single little LED to light one of those offices or something like that so what I do is I try to get it as square as possible now it's not perfect because it isn't together and again the floor isn't super critical because there's a little bit of wiggle room but obviously the more square you make it and dimensionally accurate it helps you keep the building square itself so what I did at the one end here, I took my scale rule and I measured the distance inside wall to inside wall. You can measure it however you want. I used it, uh, I just picked HO scale ruler 27 and a half feet is what I get. But you can use whatever you want. You know, angstroms, nanometers, fathoms, cubits, it doesn't matter. You're just getting a dimension. And then I have a piece of what I like to use for my floors. This is some... Uh, archival matting it's a nice heavy duty almost cardboard but it actually is archival back when I was doing photography when I would mat and sell photographs it's good stuff I like it um, again you can use whatever material you want you don't want it to be too thick though because you know, again you're just putting the floor in and you don't want it to be well you could you, know, you could use something like gator board I guess or but you just have to take account for it which I already did I mean it's hard to see I, I took account for the, for the thickness of the floor in the bottom pieces that I used. So I have a rough cut piece here. What I'll do is now I'll cut this widthwise to the 27 and a half HO scale feet. And then I'm gonna have to notch it and play with it and fit it in a lot kind of good stuff, which is fine. It's not hard to do. I mean it cuts easy. And then see how it looks. And then once I get that in or decide I'm not gonna actually gonna glue it in until I start gluing the things together. And then this partition goes in as well, which will also help keep the building square. That I might want to put put a piece on the other side, and I'll have to show that when I get it turned around a little bit, to support the floor, floor slash floor slash ceiling from the first to second. And then maybe even a piece across there again for the second floor ceiling. And then I probably when I, when I get it in, I'll probably put a piece or two across the bottom to support this but again it's not a low bearing floor I'm not gonna be driving real fork trucks on it or anything it's just <laughs> but you don't want to sag too much so maybe a piece or two across the bottom at uh, this dimension but I'm not doing that yet although I could do that and if I cut it and get it square again that helps me keep the building square so all right so gonna go ahead and thought I'd show how I get this set up and let's start working on getting the floor cut out Already got the floor cut and it seems to fit in there pretty nice. I had to move it over here to the darker side of the bench just so I had some more room. But I got it notched and set in there. And then what I was doing was kind of okay, now let's put the building together and kind of see how things are going to line up. Do I have that floor piece relatively square? Do I need to make any adjustments to it? And I think it's pretty darn good. The issue I noticed. And again, this is probably my inexperience in building these, is not so much down here. Now, here's the far end, and I can't do this with one hand, but you know, I can set that in there, hold this baby together. And, and this is pretty square, I'm surprised. It, I did a nice job on the floor, that 27 and a half feet HO scale must be about right. And then I, so there's a couple other pieces that fit up here. And I'm like, hmm, let me just set them in there, because I noticed this this piece had kind of a rrrr to it. Even though I put extra bracing on it, and you can see what I had to do, or what I'm trying to... It, I really had to go medieval on it to pull it in. So I just said, well, let me cut some curves in it. Maybe it's just, it just I shouldn't have put... And I added a, some extra bracing in here that maybe I shouldn't have. But for some reason, it was really hard, and I, I mean, not hard, it was really out and pulling it back. I got it, but of course, it tended to want to make 
the bottom kick out a little bit. So the, the, those cutting those curves definitely seem to help. And now I think I can pull it together because there's other pieces that go in, for example. And again, I can't hold all this together and try to show you. But moral of the story is, <laughs> I'm glad I checked that. Before I just, you know, wantonly went ahead and started gluing these three pieces together. Because these three pieces together look good. Base level and up to about here. Because that piece also helps keep it nice and square. And everything looks pretty darn good. It's just up above here with this big extension. For whatever reason, I don't know what I did wrong. I thought I had it, you know, you glue it and you weight it and it should be nice and flat. But it's not. It's definitely this way. So, all right, so moral of the story is, floor is good. This is going to help me keep it square. I, I'm pretty darn square, and, and I even say that because this piece, now this does not go here. This at the far end of the building. is a whole other part of the building, but obviously that is the width of the building. And I put that in there, and I pull it together and use a square. It's nice and square. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that the, the floor and the base of this, part of the build, this half of the building basically, is, is nice and square. It's just a matter of, I need to be able to pull that in with the other pieces that come up to keep it nice and you know square going, and not so bad that it was so bad I could have pulled it and glued it, but I'm afraid over time, you know, that piece wants to go where it wants to go, you know what I mean? The heart wants what the heart wants, so it's going to want to naturally flex back. So I said, I got to try to fix that, so it's not putting that much tension on it so I'll play with that some more and then move ahead but then the next step will be to get the the three walls the floor that piece glued in making sure I can get this together and then there are other pieces that go across there to keep that part all nice and square and then it's a matter of you know what I want to do paint the floor and then I obviously have to do the interior detailing run any lights I want to do before I continue on the next step for the instructions is you glue these three walls, you glue that in, you put the roof on. Well, I'm not going to put the roof on right now. That makes it a little bit of a challenge to do the interior detailing. So, all right. Just a note to self. Again, it could be my inexperience in building these kits as to why that's so out of cattywampus, but I think I can fix it and be able to pull it in and forge ahead. <laughs> he says, hopefully. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. So, it's all... Uh... All together, all clamped up, and uh, actually, it's been sitting here overnight. So it's ready to come apart. And we'll see how it does. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. I did find out what one of the issues was. Well, I think what the issue was with why the building was wanting to be so cantankerous and not uh, stay together. This piece was actually too wide. I think I might have made it wrong. It's actually made of the two end pieces and that chipboard middle piece with two 1 16th inch pieces of strip wood. I'm not sure how well they show up in there. And that that piece was wide by about, I'm going to say maybe maybe 3 30 seconds. I mean, it wasn't a huge amount, but it was enough. Because I kept looking at it and fiddling with it. And like, why is this doing this? Because all the other pieces fit great. And you know, it was squaring up nice by the, the roof supports they have. Everything was nice and square. So I said, you know what? I measured it against the piece there in the back. And sure enough, that piece was too wide. So I trimmed it. Got it in there. I, I must have made it wrong. Although I thought I made it per the instructions. But then again, could be me. So all right, anyway, so this is ready to come off. And I'll show you what I did there on the floor. I had a little bit of fun back there. And then over here, just a real slow pan. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And there's the other part of the building, the other half. I did that first because that was a lot easier. <laughs> all right, let's get it all uh, unclamped and see how we look. All righty, there we have it uh, fit together with the roof templates just sitting there. Now, if I actually built this, following the instructions, this roof would be on, but I'm going to detail the interior there, so I'm, I left it off. And I wanted to make sure it just kind of looks okay, how it sets. I see a little bit of a issue here, 
might want to fix that a little bit but other than that you know not too bad went together relatively well once I figured out what was holding the building up now I looked at this and I thought oh crap I screwed up look at that huge gap like what did I do wrong I mean the, the pieces are the pieces and and they said in the instructions they were pretty clear about it that when you put in this piece oops and this piece over here pardon my camera work um, this piece to keep the tops of them you know level and parallel and when I put it in there I put this piece first aligned it to the top of this roof template so that's where that should sit and then I took part of a square with a level now I didn't get it perfect because things move a little bit I'm not going to show you it's off it's off a little bit but I did that you know, you know, across that before I place this piece. I must have shifted a slight bit, but they're, they're pretty darn close. So I'm like, uh, well, anyway, you knuckleheadosaurus. What it is, is the foundation for this half is higher. So, in fact, I even had them sitting up, their slow pan, sitting right over here. So you can see, you know, this half sits higher so I'm hoping that's going to take that space up and uh, everything will be all nice and copacetic so there we go so all right so panic avoided I didn't have to throw the kid against the wall in frustration <laughs> at least not yet so let's um, so I can take this half Doo -doo -doo -doo. carefully set him over here and we can take this half, I can kind of show you, because that comes off. And what I decided to do, I was just having a little bit of fun here, just playing around. So I added a wood green, or wood plank floor to the bottom of this, the floor piece that's in there. And that piece is that. I added a little bit of bracing just to help level things when it's sitting into keep it nice and flat and it's seemed to work out fairly well and then I got that uh, that is actually very simple I didn't actually did not spend a lot of time on that it's a piece of uh, what is this here can you read that clever models HO scale wood plank dash D THO dash 109 so I just printed that off glued it to the cardboard piece that I used for the floor just to give a little bit of a variety because I, I to be honest I don't know what the inside of one of these buildings looks like and I could have painted it would have been fine but I think you know what let's have a little, little bit of fun here let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a little bit of texture a little bit of variety so let me see if I can tilt this up here and get a look now it won't be super visible because most of what you can see is going to be through those doors but it will be lit and you also will notice <laughs> and can you see what I did there on the back wall can you see that can you can you see what I did there after whining and complaining about the other kit where I had to put in studs I put in studs <laughs> Those are actually leftover pieces from the other kit. And uh, I'm looking through there. I'm like, well, wait a minute. You're going to be able to see that other side. So I painted the inside of the doors green to match the outside. And then I said, there's got to be some studs in there. So I took some extra pieces from the other kit <clears throat> and then cut them, glued them in. Didn't take real long. Uh, again, I don't know if I'll be able to hold the camera kind of the way that you're going to look in the building. It might not focus going through there. I might want to focus on the front side. But anyway, you can see I did. <laughs> and I added the sign, you know, no smoking. So, okay, yeah, that's fun. And now I'll go in and add some details on the floor and then get ready to cut the other ceiling slash floor that's going to go in across here with lights across it. So I have to get my LEDs out and figure out how to run the wires and all that kind of fun stuff. But... 
That's the base. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Enough babbling. And it actually looks square, believe it or not. Which is amazing for me. If I line it up using the Rob Bennett, line it up to the mat. Hey, looks square. Okay. All right. So let's uh, make it on the foundation and make sure my gap actually is okay. And then we're going to just continue on. And then the next big thing will be on the other kit. Slow pan. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Again, it's still just sitting here. But it needs to go together as well. It's sitting there saying, hey, you got the other one together. I want my four walls together. So I need to get, uh, like I said, the interior done down here. Because you got to reach in there. And obviously this, this comes off. So I'll be able to reach in there and do that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then they have you put on this wall and this wall and continue building it, which I think will look, look kind of cool. So before I, but before I get anything in there, I want to get this interior in and I need to get, I hope it comes in the mail today so I can work on that and get this moving along. So, all right, let's get back to work and uh, see what else I can screw up. All right, so we're rocking and rolling here with the interior ceiling. And what I did was I cut out some templates out of some pieces of papilla just to get the the right shape and the notches for the interior. Mm, can't see it all. The interior studs, and then this one piece here was pretty simple. That just sets in there nice. I can finagle that in there. There's enough room to get it in sideways and everything. Now the issue is, or the issue became... <laughs> On the front here, again, I cut out a piece with a template out of paper and then transferred it to my cardboard, I'm calling it. But, yeah, I can't finagle that in, you know, inside there, so I cheated. So what I did was, you see, I added an, an additional 1 8 inch piece all the way around and then cut a slightly larger piece. Da -da -da -da. And then that just drops right in. Boom. So that'll be the first to second story. Ceiling, floor, roof, whatever. You know, that'll be tacked down with some... I need to trim it a wee little bit to make it fit better. But this piece I can use for the second story ceiling. Da -da -da -da. And again, so I might do that to partition off one of these offices in here and have a light in it. So... That is it. You can't, of course, you can't see now. It's all dark, but uh, that'll be the way I'll do that. Then we have to add lights, of course, of course, to the first floor there. Need some lights to light up the interior and some details, but I can do all that. And then I have the ceilings slash floors cut, ready to be installed. All right, let's keep forging ahead here. All right, what's going on in there? All right, so I got the interior done. At least good enough. So what I did, let me kind of come back here a wee bit. Don't mind me as I juggle the camera around. Sorry, folks. Now, I didn't go crazy on this. I had some stuff in my goodie boxes that I could just kind of lay on in there just to make it look that there's, there's some kind of activity going on good enough and I don't even know what the interior of one of these buildings really would look like or what, what you know what I mean how it's partitioned or anything so I, like, oh. I don't know I just figured it's kind of a you know place they get freight in and they're gonna get it off rail cars and they're gonna give it out to the various local farmers and other folks that have paraphernalia coming in so good enough some stuff is there it's boxed it's ready to go and then add a little bit of detail so when you look in the in the doors, you can see some evidence of life going on. There's Louie back there working on some boxes. So that's just to give it some interest. And there's a gentleman heading out to the dock. I think I'm going to modify the, the uh, kit in situ <laughs> on site. Have a larger platform here, and then this dock's going to extend out for 
tie into this platform. So I'll make that a little bit. So that'll be more when I get it on site and figure out how, how I want to do that. Uh, and then, you know, bring it over, have the stairs come down. Maybe have a bigger canopy. I don't know. It's just some fun, you know. All right. So that's done. And now the next thing is to figure out how I'm going to light it. And looking through some other paraphernalia, I found some of these 12 volt light strips that I have since it was all together that's nine of them I cut it into strips of three and you can see I'll kind of wire it this one to that one to that one then over to the, to the over here which is nice on this this whole building's open so I can do yeah, a little more room over there to do some wiring and connecting out to the down to the layout and everything so I don't have to mess with it inside this half of the building so that'll be the plan for that then I'll get those. I'm going to solder them. I mean, they come with jumpers, but I, I'm not sure. For the long haul, that I would really trust that. So I'll go ahead and solder some by 24 gauge or 27. I don't know. Just some wire there with the pigtail going over there. And I can then connect to the incoming bus. Because I'm also planning to, planning to have exterior lights. So they'll need to be lit as well. So, okay. Let's uh, forge ahead and see what other kind of mischief we can get into. All right, so here are the lights set up to go in the front and rear section of the front section of the front area of the front part. <laughs> this part of the building. I was going to try to run them in series to here and over, but I couldn't because of the divider that's there and the fact that, you know, these are two pieces and I have to fit them in. I couldn't, if I had soldered this all together, and I did solder them, I just trust that a little bit more than using the connectors. I couldn't get it in. So I said, all right, fine. I had to extend it because I had the leads cut short. But So now I have two pigtails that will run over into this side. And I'm probably going to have a 12-volt bus over there. So anyway, so these are now ready to go in. Although i got to figure out what I'm going to do for exterior lights. Because once the floors go in, it could be a little bit of a challenge to run those wires as well. So I might need to do that first. And then flip these over. A little bit of canopy glue, boom, get them glued in. So, all right. Moving on here, moving ahead, folks. Moving ahead. Okay, got the two first floor roof slash ceilings in place with the uh, lights. Wires run out here to go on the other side of the building. And now for the second story, let's put a little partition in here. Cut a piece of that cardboard, a little bit of canopy glue. Then I have this, just one LED. Again, just a little bit of a light for the top for this office back here. I figure this is the big boss's office, and you know he's not working late. So just a little bit of light back here. To look like maybe there's something going on. And then that will run back as well. I have to drill a little tiny hole here through the roof support. And then... We are pretty much ready. Oh, you can't see anything. To continue on. Well, that, that's pretty much done. I decided not to put exterior lights off the building. I think I'm going to have them outside because it. Anyway, it just I made a decision not to because the lights I was going to use would require another, you know, four hours worth of work. Okay, maybe not that bad, but a lot more work, and I just didn't feel like going through it because I want to get this stuff done. I may use some of those on the other building. We'll see. But I think I have a way where I can put believable external lights to light up the appropriate docks and whatnot. So, all right. Let's get this on. And then this building is pretty much ready to go on the base, I believe. All right. Reaching ahead here and just uh, looking for something to do because I'm so bored. <laughs> uh, decided to build the dock for the laser modeling kit and they give it to you a scale on a piece of paper and they say okay lay it down and then they give you the strip wood pieces actually already cut well most of them the the, the under the underside of the platform is cut the supports are cut the individual boards are not so yeah i have to cut 145 one inch long boards to glue on each individually fun so they give you the template and they say, you know, put some wax paper over it 
for when you assemble it. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't have any wax paper. So all I did was have this piece of cardboard, and I did have, or do have, some handy dandy box tape. Bah, 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 bah. Clear, you know, so I just put that down and secured the template down and glued it on top of that. Because I didn't feel like running out to get wax paper just for this. So I'm going to let, let a little bit of weight on it just to set it up. Not for real long. Just going to run up and grab a sandwich. And then come back, put the supports on. Because I'm actually assembling this upside down. And then over here, I do a nice slow pan. Or somewhat slow. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There are all the pieces to be cut. I had to stain them. So they're going to sit for a while. Then i got to cut 145 of them. Yay! And then glue them on one by one. That shouldn't be terrible, but okay. Um, oh yeah, by the way, this uh, South River kit is now being secured to its base. The brick base is there, and that's just sitting there doing some drying up. So that's moving along smartly as well. And I'm probably going to go ahead and build the in the uh, boiler room get that out of the way you know, I'm trying to get some of this little stuff out of the way as I'm waiting I'm still waiting for the darn interior to come in for this for this in the back there I can't really do much till I get that hopefully today we'll see so all right a little bit in progress a little bit of making do with what you got to uh, keep forging away forging ahead here boy vey isn't this gonna be fun all right, so <laughs> now I have to build the back loading platform dock overhang. And, well, what it looks like, this is the mahonker right here. It's got these pieces that go in, and then a piece has to be glued here, 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 and then these stringers, runners, whatever you call them, get glued in. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is sitting there. It might not be, oops, sorry, super visible. All right, so, again, the way they have you do this is they have a piece of paper with it drawn to scale and everything. Okay, fine, I have it down the same way with my box tape on it. And then I'm figuring, how in the world am I going to glue this in? Because it's, even if you look at these, they aren't flat. So these don't sit flat on this. Which I'm hoping that's going to work out okay. So I said, all right, here's what I'll try. So I put a steel rule, a little bit thicker steel rule here in the back. And then this this piece here, the, the single piece, is against, it's get against it and kind of held in a, a little bit. So this piece right here is this one here. So I'm going to try to back these in, glue them to that, and then somehow glue these two on the front end of it which is what they're said to do we help I point the camera right let that dry and then glue these stringers in <laughs> yeah right all right hey nothing ventured nothing gained so I'll try it again I got some of these are covered up because I needed to put some other pieces in here these are the scrap pieces to keep this nice and vertical back there so I can get this one glued in this one this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, so most of them. Then, I have to pull some of these out so I can get the other ones, you know, glued in. So then, the back piece and all these will be in. And then somehow, try, <laughs> good lord, try to take these and glue them to the front. You know, those being... Again, these these two pieces got to be glued on. I'm like, are you seriously? <sighs> this is definitely something that that is going to push my limits here. So I, I don't know. I, I may I may get this together, or it may wind up in the trash. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, hey, we'll give it a whirl. Um, then I think it'll be okay if I can get these in, because then once you get the the other pieces going across. I should be all right. And just as a note, you know, I was not going to try to get into these little notches here to clean them out. I figured, you know, 
There's no way I want these pieces, these stringers, I'll call them, to be tight when they go in. I mean, that would just be a nightmare. And this is going to have to flow. So I did take each one of those, laid a flat, sanded it, and verify they're going to slip right into these notches here. So hopefully. Because <laughs> this is going to be a freaking trip and a half. So all right, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. No promises, but let's see what... Uh, Let's see what happens here. Well, so far so good. Somehow I've got it all together. <laughs> I guess my little makeshift jigs seem to work okay. Let's see, this is the front side, or actually the back, as well as the building. I actually have those two pieces glued in there, the front piece glued on. Now I'm going to let it set up. I'm afraid to even look at a cross side. <laughs> and then. Hopefully, once I get the stringers in there, add some more rigidity to it, and then set it aside, and it's ready to go on the building. Well, there's still a roof covering has to go on top of this, but this, to me, is the hard part. So, whew. so far, so good. So, we'll see if I can keep my good luck rolling here and get this thing finished. Well, somehow I actually pulled this off. <laughs> now, the dock wasn't hard. That was actually kind of fun to build. And yeah, I did cut 150 pieces out. And they're all individually glued on top there. You know, just a little bit of weathering. You're not really going to be able to see this, unfortunately. And it does have nut bolt washers that came with the kit. So, okay, so I drilled a hole for them bad boys and put them in. And then the canopy for the dock actually worked out okay. Um, you can see how it's kind of formed there. I, the jigs seem to work okay, and it actually looks pretty straight. <laughs> I'll focus there in the end, but you can see the odd shape to it. So now very carefully, I'll set that aside until it's time to be installed. So, all right, so uh, moving ahead here. One more task completed. All righty, getting ready for the next big step here, which is getting this building all together as one nice, homogeneous, complete, wonderful building. And what I'm going to do, you know, since I got wires on the inside and, and I'm monkeying around a little bit, which is not the way the instructions build it, you can see I added a bus in there for the positive negative 12 volts. A resistor is in there. The resistor is there for that light there on the end. I decided to add that. Man, that thing's tiny. Tiny, the wires are tiny, the eustachian's tiny. Anyway, so I'll get that painted up. Now, if I understand the way they recommend it, they have, they, have, they have the roof on. Well, I can't do that. Not yet, because i got a monkey around in here, because they have wires coming from this side. So gluing the roof on there would really cause me a lot of swear language. So what I think I'm going to do is actually kind of line things up. And it looks like it lines up pretty good. This building teeters a little bit on that base, which I'm not surprised, given the fact you know what this base is made of and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything lined up. I'm going to glue this to this foundation. And I'm going to be able to weight it down so it's going to sit nice and flush. And then I'm going to bring it in and glue the foundation and the building to this building. Hopefully <laughs> that works okay. Like I said, that's not necessarily what he says to do in the instructions. So I'm taking a little bit of a different tact here. We'll see how it works. I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried a lot at all, to be honest. You, you can always hide things. This is kind of critical right here. You know, if that's off too far, that really will be noticeable. So, when I get this lined up, again, I'm not too worried, to be honest, even if the building doesn't sit perfectly flush, you know, you're going to hide it with some skids and, and some bushes and a vehicle. I mean, there's all, all kinds of ways to disguise that. I know you shouldn't be, build kits, you know, sloppily with the intention of hiding things on the layout but i'm just saying if it doesn't go together perfectly 
there's ways I can disguise that. And, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So that's what I'm going to do. And then when I get all that, when this is done and this is attached, you can see I have the wires running over from the other half of the building. They have to be soldered to the bus, the plus and minus bus. This light, the outside light's already done, and, and I tested it, and I know that that works okay. And then another thing I did, since I can't have wires sticking out, normally you know, once you once you solder your your drop or your you know your pigtail down to the layout, it's going to come out under the foundation. Well, I need it. I need this nice and flat for what I'm going to do here. So what I did was I, I, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Okay, see that black wire? It's got one of those little connectors on it that's connected to the bus and then I enlarge the hole a little bit so that when I get everything together I'll be able to <laughs> take that from the inside feed it down through you know and then, then glue the roof on but at that point I'll have to have the building up on stilts or, or something you know what I mean because that wire will be sticking out and I don't want it to, you know, be canting around quite a bit. So, but that's okay. You know, I can handle that. I can put some of my metal weights down here, set the building on, be nice and secure. And I can just work it like that until I get it done. So I'm not worried about that. But that little pigtail is how I'm going to do it. Ah, I just hit my light. Sorry. Reading. There we go. All right. So anyway, so that's just what I did. You see the pigtail sticking down enlarged hole once I get everything all together and done and, and nice and secured I can then very carefully reach in there and hopefully not break the wires <laughs> these little wires are so small and they're hard to see you know yeah, I want everything to be scale yeah okay yeah be careful what you wish for but I should be able to get that and, and then carefully feed it down through all right enough babbling let's try to get this major step here done and see how things look Alright, one little delay here before I put the buildings together. One thing I realized I hadn't had on was the electrical drop. And I looked at the kit, and he does have it. He does include it, actually. It's there at the end. He seemed to be a little excessive with the wires that he used. He gives you some Berkshire Easy line. I'm not sure why that looks like a wind damage just waiting to happen. But anyway, <laughs> so what I did, I did use the piece from the kit. And I super glued that on. And that down here is the other is the meter that comes with a kit. And then for the conduit drop there, I didn't use O25 wire or whatever he gives in the kit. I actually used some engineering O32 tube. Because my thought being, if I want to run the pigtails here, what I actually did was I was able to take that easy line. Stick it down in the top of the tube so it actually is going into the tube and then bring it up and kind of lay it on top of the insulators, a little dab of super glue, and then come back in and repaint things. I mean, it's not perfect, but you really can't see a lot at layout. And this is the closest you'll ever get to this. You can see I couldn't cut the ends quite right and they're just kind of laying on there, but you know, whatever. They look fine. And then they run down, and then I did super glue the tube on. Where I super glued it, what I kind of do is kind of pull it up over the tube, and then I come back and paint it a rust color so it kind of looks like, you know, conduit supports. And then down to the meter, just paint it black with a little bit of a light gray, lighter gray for the actual meter cover. So, all right, so that's done. I don't have to mess with it. I definitely could not have done this on the building. Or, I mean, um, when it's assembled. No way. Because this way I, got, I was able to pick it up and put you know, this side of the building on end. And very e carefully with tweezers sneak that easy line into the top of the tube. Which it actually is in there. Man, maybe I should actually run power that way. No, I don't think so. Okay. So just a little bit of delay to get that done. And now we're on to getting the buildings actually put together. Well, it's about time. Let's get as an interior. All right, so the stuff came. I uh, actually purchased it from Interaction Enterprises. 
it's pretty cool stuff. You may want to check them out at your leisure. And this is a little interior machine shop type kit that includes, as you can see, what it includes there. Two lays, a milling machine, a bandsaw, four shop tables, and some Honda tools. So that's the uh, accoutrements there. I painted them up. I'm not real, real worried about it. Looking super, super great. Tables are kind of neat. I added some other hand tools, some other tools, some other boxes and paraphernalia just to make it look like it's, you know, something's going on inside there. And then it's going to go inside here, and I still need to figure out exactly where. But I'm pretty much just going to put them in, get them glued down. I have to get the rest of the rafters on and lights and everything so I can keep this building moving. So, all right, so there we go. Let's get this... Uh, installed and finally get this building working some more. Alrighty, here's my rendition of the interior, at least what I'm gonna do with it. Looks good enough. Now I'm sure an actual machine shop like this will probably be a lot dirtier and to be more, you know, shavings and junk and crap on the floor, but eh, good enough for me. I got almost everything. I saved one desk. Maybe I'll use it up top. Throw some figures in there. These are kind of the, I want to say, the, the less good figures. They're not the prizer figures. They're more like Wooden Scenics and Merton and some of the other ones that really aren't quite as nice as the prizer ones. So, And then another thing I'm noticing, um, I was doing some trial fitting, you know, the walls. Because the, the next thing I have to do is finish the rafters, which is kind of silly because you're never going to see it. But okay, it'll help support the LEDs, I guess. <laughs> Because literally, you're never ever even going to see that. So why do you waste your time doing this? And again, I, I, I talk about wasting my time. You know, I put all the, the studs on these darn walls, and I had this back wall. There's it go. It goes like this. You know, just kind of fitting it up and seeing how it's going to fit. Well, I had to go back and trim almost all of these studs in order to make it fit. I mean, just the way it's sitting the way it sits on the foundation and I can't really change that because it's nice and flush and it's only going to come down so far but it's not like one side is hanging over and one side's not so I mean that's the way it's sitting it's sitting pretty flush so okay you know note to self it's kind of cute that they would include all that stuff but do you really need to do it you know I guess your choice um, modeler's choice I mean okay it looks kind of neat but again I really think you're not going to see it and then I had to after putting all that time into, into putting the darn things in, I had to come back in and cut almost every single one of them. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy about this kit right now. All right, let me, uh, I got to finish this. LED's got to go in. I got to figure out how to run those wires. And then the second story for the ceiling slash floor goes in here. Uh, and then I, I put the other major, I don't know what you'd call these, partitions. And then the, the two, uh, this wall and this wall go in. And you have to detail the second story. Uh, great. Okay. All right. So that's that. If I can do a fly over here just to see what it looks like from the top. And again, I don't think you're really going to see a whole ton of this when I get it together. But at least I can say I did it. <laughs> I just want to get these darn buildings done now. <laughs> it's taking me longer than I thought. All right. We'll keep plugging away here. Alrighty, got all the rafters in, the, the lights run, which was an adventure, to say the least. What I decided to do, I used the three LED set that came with the kit, and I had some additional ones, that's why you see the wires different. And instead of using individual ones, I just wired this one to this one. You know, I just, just had a pigtail, cut it, soldered it in. We watched to have even more leads coming down through than already there are there so I did it on the front and the back was able to <laughs> well, with some harsh language get the wires run routed under the rafters get the LEDs up get some additional glue on there to hold them up hopefully and then they are routed it's gonna be hard, really hard to see but they come down in that far corner I don't even think I can make it light enough trust me they're way back there in the corner of the office, and that's where they're going to stay. 
and I'm not messing around with it anymore. Now, I noticed that the hole he gave me here in the corner of the office is way too small for additional wire runs. So what I'm probably going to have to do for the second story lights, I'm probably going to run them over to this corner, drill another hole here, which I can access because the bottom of the building is, is it's an open base inside the concrete here, so the stone. So I can go ahead and drill another hole and then run all the second story wires over and down out there. There's no way I'm getting them down in there. It ain't going to happen. And then I'm like, okay, look at, let this set up. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, man. I made another major mistake. Can you tell what it is? Not yet. Okay. Notice where this ends up. Oh, I notice where this fancy gentleman's walking. And then if I take the second story floor, that opening's for the stairs. And I set it there. Guess what's right there? Yep. The damn lights. So, I'm thinking, okay, what can I do? Because you know, here's the stairs over here that I already made that are supposed to come up, you know, to the second floor. They would be right there. I'd have to cut it out and frame it, which wouldn't be a problem. I could pull that guy out. That wouldn't be an issue. I can yank him out of the way. But you know what? I don't feel like messing with this. I mean, I, whatever. I, you know what? Sorry, guys. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to glue that on there, get it set, and forge ahead. And I know there's no way for the four, for the little HO scale people to get up to or down from the second floor. They're going to have to jump out windows, I guess. Although the windows are acetated shut, so that's not going to work for them. So I guess they're, 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 they're screwed. So, <laughs> so... Oh, man, you know, I should have thought of that, but whatever. Again, the only way you're going to see those stairs is looking through this door, the windows of the door, which, yeah, you probably could see. But you know what? Let's see how many people notice it on the layout. And again, you guys are probably going to see and know more about this building, especially on the inside, than almost anyone else ever will. A lot of my friends don't watch my videos, so they're never, they're never going to know. So it'll be interesting to see if they come over, if they look in the door and say, Wait a minute, and I'm looking through the windows. There's no stairs. Okay, you're a loser. I'm out of here. So, <laughs> all right. All right, let that set up. Get the floor in and clamped on a little bit, and then continue working the second floor with no stairs. <laughs> Yay, I'm done. Nah, I'm just smashing your taters. Uh, I just wanted to try to fit these other two walls, but what I did do, per the instructions, see this wall is still loose as a goose, and this front wall, although I probably could put that one on, but the instructions don't say to do that. However, the other two walls are on and secured, and yes, I did have to come through and trim more of the interior studs on the back wall. I'd, whatever, no comment. So, now... Oh boy, now I got to make all the furniture for up here. <laughs> you know, I could just slap the walls on and put the roof on and be done with it. But I guess what fun would that be? I couldn't whine and complain to you guys. But, I, oh, check it out. I put the railings on for the stairs. The stairless wonder that the building is. And I have one desk. So, yay! Slap it on the eave and put it on the layout. I did add, like I mentioned... I notched a hole over here for the wires for the upper floor lights that are going to run over. And I actually added, I probably can't really tell, but I put a an evergreen tube just to help route it down. Because you try to stick wires through there, especially now that it's getting more and more assembled. You know, that could be a uh, harsh language-inducing endeavor. So I decided to make it a little bit easier, and then the leads will go right down through the tube. Alright, so now it's time to make 4,000 pieces of furniture. Which, you know, isn't really hard, it's just freaking tedious, but, alright. That's how you eat an elephant, right? One desk or drafting table at a time. So I'm going to start working on that, then over on the other kit, let's do a quick pan to the left side of the workshop. So this building is getting really close to being done. Uh, you can see all the other roofs and accoutrements and cupolas and 
all their goodies are on the building. Now it's a matter of making the eave lumber up, getting that painted. Yeah, that one little, that's a little out of caddy wampus, but I won't tell if you guys won't tell, but <laughs> oopsie. But overall, it's coming together pretty nice. I spin it around here. Yeah, luckily that's in the back, that one. <laughs> and that's the back side. So this is the track side. So this is the side that you will very rarely and can't even see very good right now. And then continuing our 360 montage. This end. Well, it looks like I got these roofs a little out of alignment. Oh well. That's what happens when you work from the front. You don't look back on the side. Oopsie. Sorry, Mr. South River. Okay. All right. So that's coming along. So I'm probably going to, before I do the tedium of making 80,000 pieces of furniture, I'm probably going to go ahead and get the Eve roof trim material. Ugh. I got a glow of 1x4 and two a 1x8. Get it painted, paint some other lumber for under the underneath the eaves, and then cut and fit all of it individually. Oh, my life is such agony! All right, back to work. More to more to come as I get to, uh, get some progress, get some furniture made. Oh my lord, was this annoying! So, so I got the furniture made, and I I. I no malice, man. I'm, I'm done. This is so nitnoid. So I, I made four of the desks. I could make four more. I made three of the drafting tables, which are, you know, kind of cool, but, man, they, they take a long time. Anyway, whatever. So they're done. I'm, I'm saying three of them. And that actually is an E-size drawing <laughs> that I found on Google Images. Uh, you can't tell because unfortunately it's so darn small. But anyway, it is it is an E-size drawing. Some file cabinets. They came from those interaction hobbies. One of their kind of work storage cubbies. I made that up as well. And then did make four of the, I'll call them a bookcase, uh, that came in the kit. Not my finest work. These things are really a pain. I mean, it's interesting. That they have them and they're all laser cut and they build kind of nice, but man, it's annoying. Anyway, so you know what? I just, like I said, I said I'm done. I I don't want to spend my life making furniture. It took me two days just about to, you know, in between work and other things, you know, down the tubes where I could have been finishing the, the damn kit. So enough. They're going to be installed. I'm going to just do something on the on the second story here, get it done, and I'll show you how that looks, and then we're just going to forge ahead because I can't live my life on all this little picky uni stuff so I mean it's fun I like it but again I'm getting to the point in my life where you know what if it's not going to be all that visible and I know people are just going to come in and go mm-hmm oh look at that nice and move on I'm not going to waste my time on not waste my time spend my time when there's so much other stuff I got to do all right rant over back to work oh okay I'm done <laughs> There's the interior on the second floor, as good as I'm going to get it. I added some, you know, the, the desks and some people doing various things and some other stuff from the junk box and the table there. And back in the other area, there's like, again, it's some type of light manufacturing. I don't know what. I just slap stuff in there to make it look like something's going on. Not even going to worry about the stuff you're not going to see from the front. Because you're not going to see it from the front. So, <laughs> getting lazy. I'm getting lazy in my old age. So this is the, kind of the more of the drafting office. Cletus and Bartholomew are in there working on a drawing. That's the engineering library. That's not going to be very well lit. Because of what I think I'm going to do for the lighting. Remember this menagerie of interior goodness. Let's put... One here, one here, again, run this one to this one, and over and down. And put one back there, over and down. And then i got to figure out if I want to add exterior lights. For example, over this door, this is a dock door. 
and then over the front door and I'm gonna get those wires through and run as well I don't know <laughs> that's the next magic trick I gotta pull off okay because because again this is so close now because what I could do next is put the rafters in which I may or may not do to be honest the more I think about it again it's something that you just totally are not gonna see maybe install them in areas where I'm gonna where I want a little bit of help to glue the lights up but I just don't know if it's worth the effort to put them all in just for them to disappear forever and no one to even come over and go, ooh, look at you. You put rafters in. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right. I Man, it's getting close. I, I, I can feel it coming. It's getting close. Let's, uh, let's keep plugging away here. All righty. Got the lights in. And all the rafters I have are installed. <laughs> because... I was starting off, you know, just putting them here and here where, where I knew I was going to support the lights. And then I got some others in, and some of the other ones started out to break. And I was like, you know what, whatever. If you break, you're out of here. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to glue them back together. So you can see there's some areas that are missing. But again, once you get that together, you're never, ever going to know that. So the next step is to I'm let, let this set up overnight. i got to trim some of these on the edge out here so this wall fits nice. Uh, the next step would be, you can see I have this end wall just kind of sitting here right now. Again, i got to decide if I want to run lights for the doors. And then, I just noticed an issue. Well, actually, it kind of, <laughs> I was trying to avoid it, but I'm pretty sure it's an issue. And I'm not sure what I could have done differently. If you look at how the wall, the side wall, I'm just going to focus or not. How it comes up there, it's too high. It's going to interfere with the roof. Now, there's not a whole lot that I can do other than try to come in there and, and shave that off so, it's, so the roof will fit over it. Both sides are like that, but it's really... <laughs> again, maybe it's my inexperience, but again, the way this thing sits on the foundation... I mean, the floor is the width of the floor, and it's centered, and the concrete base overhangs the floor which means when the sidewalls come on they're going to sit on that if they if they extend down then i could have brought them down a little bit but sort of kind of but not really because the end walls you know they have the typical the light's not that great here you know the typical notch that lines up with the wall so i mean this wall is going to sit where this wall is and vice versa and I can't bring this wall down any lower and then try to raise this wall up you know me to get rid of that little gap you see the little other little gap there not gap it's more like a I don't know if it'll focus on that or not it's right there the side wall's up too far because the roof's going to try to come down it's going to hit that and it's not focused anyway trust me that's something I'm going to have to work on and it's not going to be fun <laughs> to say the least for the wall that's already on now for the wall that's off I probably can go ahead and get that fixed up but more fun again I don't know if it's me and the way I did it or I don't see how I could have done things differently to be honest based on the geometry the width you know the size of this base they give me the size of the floor how the walls are notched I don't know how else it would have gone together could I have caught it earlier and fixed it when it was off. Yeah, that, that would have been nice. So anyway, again, more fun. So, more to come as we uh, tackle the, the, this next problem. Okay, we're good. I fixed it. It's now about 15 minutes later. Literally, I was going to go to bed, and you know, I was like, oh, frustrated. I'm like, ah. But I knew it would bug me all night long, so I decided to try and fix it. So what I did... I got the roof on. It's going to be fine. I mean, it is cut, but it's up under. It's going to be up under the eaves. So this might fall a little bit as I take this off. But I want to make sure that they all fit okay. And this uh, fits in there nice and snug, that's for sure. Okay. This is the front wall. So I measured it, and it was just about two clapboards. So I very carefully, very carefully indeed... Had it laid down on the bench, 
took a straight edge, went along, and knocked off two clapboards. In fact, if you want me to send you two clapboards, there they are. <laughs> that that went, went pretty good. So, okay, so that side's okay. On the back side where the wall was already installed what I did can I just oops, I don't want that piece to fall on the floor just don't mind me here as I try to hold the camera and spin the building and not drop it and break it any more than I've already messed it up all right so, <laughs> so let me pop the roof template off okay so what I did here, I took, where is it, the, the knife with a little blade on it, which I was going to show, but now I can't seem to have it handy. Oh, it's right here. Duh. That's got the little, that's a little knife, a little saw blade on it. And I very carefully, the first thing I did was take out this little corner, kind of line things up, said, yep, it is exactly, almost exactly two clapboards. So then what I did, I cut a little vertical slot here, and just very carefully, nice and slowly, came along, boop, took that piece off. Checked it out, made sure, and then cut another vertical slot here, and then just kind of did each window section at a time, and took it all the way across. Now, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but again, once the roof is on, you know, it's up under the eave and everything, you're not really going to see it. So, again, I, I don't know if it was me that did something wrong. But you can see now how it lines up nice and flush with the, you know, with the E brackets and everything. I, I, I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, but again, there's only so much I can do because of the base and the wall and how they interlock. But anyway, problem solved. I don't think anyone will ever know once it's done. So I'm glad I got that fixed. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And now I can uh, very safely have a nice night's slumber and pick this up again tomorrow. <laughs> oh yes, and more mistakes were made. <laughs> Story of my life. Alright, so what happened here? I got all the walls on, I got you know this wall, that wall, I ran the wires for the the lights down through new holes. I was able to get them all together and, and fairly good. <laughs> Good enough. And no, it actually looks okay. So then the next step is put the roof trusses in and glue the roof supports on. Well I'm looking at it and I you know I, I placed some of the of course you get pre-cut trusses. Bunch of them. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you know what? They're sitting too low. And it turns out, yeah, they are. And the reason is these end trusses which are just lined up with the end wall and, and they're pretty darn flush if I say so myself I think this wall this end wall is actually too high it should sit down in the little slots I don't know if I can show it if I carefully just extract the roof panel it's just sitting there for now I don't know if it's going to focus if you see in that corner That truss should be down inside that little notch, uh, such as the notch that's right there. Okay, so that means that it's, it's only got to mean one thing, that since this is lined up right, that this wall's too high. But I can't take it down anymore, <laughs> again, because of the way it sits on the base, it, it runs right into it. So, you know, this wall is where it's got to sit because of the interlocking notch. This wall is where it's going to sit. It actually sits pretty good on the inside, floor to floor and everything, but whatever. Okay, so, panic sets in and I swear I'm going to take up basket weaving. No. I said, all right, what, what are we going to do here? Now, the reason these are here, in my mind, yeah, okay, they're realistic, but who cares? You're never, ever going to see them. I think they're really more to support those roof uh, template pieces. Because if not, you know, it's a pretty good long span, almost a foot 
and you go to work on it, shingle it, and you're pushing on it, I could see them bowing. All right, so that's probably what re the real intent of those is. So, okay, I'm going to put some of them. I'm not going to put all of them in. I left one, two, three, four of them out because I'm lazy. But I put three of them in. And then what I did was, well, this, you know, these then aren't level with these. So even if I left them in, if I hadn't done something, which you can see what I did. I just scabbed on, it's actually a piece of... 2x12 and 3x12 glued together and then glued to the roof truss because what that does is it then makes it flush across the roof and the way I determined that was a little science experiment now I just took a straight edge laid it across the two that I know are right and then you know, I can see and the, the camera probably won't pick it up but adding those pieces on top of the trusses now makes everything across here nice and flush. And I checked it on both sides, and it's not bad. It's it's a lot closer than it than it would have been if I had left just the bare trusses. Because if, if you put a truss on there, it's really visually you can see it's too low. All right, good enough. So I'm just going to let these set up, and then I think I'm going to put the corner trim pieces on and then put the roof pieces on all right so that's again i don't know if it's me if i did something wrong i guess i did i'm sure the kit was designed better than to go to to go together better than i put it together but hey i'm i'm making it work just like just like i do in the one-to-one -one world <laughs> hey honey turn around or go out to the mall when you come back everything will be in place but will it be right I said it'll be in place. I didn't say it'll be right. So we're getting there. I don't. I don't know why. I mean, I can see what it is, the issue is. Again, the issue is if I, this end wall is too high. It needs to go down. Can't go down because of the the way the walls all sit on this darn base. I'm thinking this base might be the crux of my problems, or maybe it's just me. Okay, enough babbling. I know I fixed it. I know what to do. Let's forge ahead. Yeah, here's a roof going on, so you can see my makeshift lazy Bennett rendition of the roof gables or whatever the hell they are. It works pretty good. You know, it's plenty of support in there for when I get to do the shingling, so that's going to work pretty good. Again, the the, the build up of the two by and three by twelves got it pretty nice and level, so. All right, there you go. Okay, let's get the front piece on and get shingling. Okay, the uh, South River kit pretty much together now. I think I skipped a couple segments when I was doing some work, but uh, sorry about that. But I did get you know this this side built, all the interior lighting all soldered up, one feeder dropped down, then this was glued to this. Actually looks okay. I can't. I, I can see a little bit of a gap down here, but again, I'm not sure it's a, a showstopper. So, what I'm doing now is you can see all the roofs are on. That one dorm was a little wonky, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> it's just funny. Some things I do good, and some things I'm like, oh man. The darn dormer's not right. Anyway, <laughs> so the now we're trimming the roof, and that starts off with uh, the fun event of taking this is one thirty second by three sixteenths. They supply it. I painted it, you know, the trim color, and it gets glued under the eaves all the way around. Okay, well, except for the little dormer and these itty bitty roofs here, we don't do that. Well, I must have the roofs off because I had to come back and trim it because it sticks out past the roof. Must be I don't have the roofs on perfectly, you know, side to side. All right, well, just deal with it and cut it. So that's done. So now I have all these wonderful strips made up of the 1x4 glued to the 1x8 that is going to go along all the edges. 
and that won't be that terrible. He has a lot of cutting and fiddling, but really it should not be that bad. So we're going to do that next. Get everything trimmed done, all the trimming on the roof done. The whole thing's going to be done. That'll take a little while. And then I think then we're ready for sh shingles on this side. There's a, there's a tar paper roof on this side. I think the rest is shingle. Anyway, that's the next step. So, all right, let's do a little bit of uh, cutting and trimming the roof.